without telling you the technique. I just want to see how well it works. I mean, I haven't practiced it, but I want you to not be a limp rag doll, but don't go sparring mode. Commit to it, not like. So for this one, you step in, you, you try to stab me like this. Okay. Oh, yeah. So imagine for a moment, a time traveler from the Middle Ages gets attacked by Ghostface from Scream. What's gonna happen? We're gonna be talking about medieval unarmed defenses versus dagger attacks. And of course, whether it's a dagger or a knife, single edge, double edge, doesn't matter. It's all gonna be the same. So uh, we're gonna be talking about this for the sake of entertainment and education to a limited degree. By which I mean, do not attempt anything you see here. Stay out of trouble. Do not try to get into a knife fight or anything like that. You'll see that a lot of this looks very similar to modern knife defense. The proper kind of knife defense. I'm not talking mech dojo. You lightly touch somebody and they writhe on the floor, unable to control themselves. And I'm not talking like some kind of anime fever dream where you channel your key into your buttocks and catch the blade with them. Just to point that out, so it is for entertainment primarily, and my interpretations here may very well be flawed, or some of it may be completely wrong. Just keep that in mind, all right? So, disclaimer done. What do you do, or what did medieval people supposedly do according to the manuscripts when they got attacked by a knife or dagger? So, there are going to be some problems, of course, like, Anything you, you show, any kind of technique you show, somebody can come along and go, ah, this is, that's not gonna work, that's not gonna work, that's not gonna work. Thanks, ambulance. I mean, Maybe somebody just got stabbed, you don't know. They yeah. They tried the butt key technique and it didn't work. The butt key, yeah, exactly. They, they just did not have enough key. So, uh, a, lo a lot of the techniques involve ice pick grip and stabbing downward. There are also some, uh, you know, thrusts like this, exactly. One of the simplest things they show is you do this, all right? And not just this, but this. And I'm being gentle here with him, of course, but the idea is to violently wrench it to really twist that joint and hopefully make them drop the dagger or otherwise injure the arm. There are a lot of ways to screw up stab. Like I can easily just drive this into my hip. So I need to catch this right under the wrist so that I lock this dagger in. That's actually what makes this work. If you catch it here, no, it's not gonna work because you can just slip out of it. But if you catch it like right under the hand, grab the hand and twist it, it's locked. The manuscripts also show a counter to that. I would do it this way, which is if I continue pressing down, this is gonna be very painful for him. So this way I can grab the, my own blade. And for this, you need to keep in mind, those are daggers that are often not sharp. They can be, some of them are sharpened. It's hard to generalize medieval and Renaissance daggers, really. Some were single-edged, some double-edged, some had a thick diamond cross-section that flattened at the point, some were sharpened only at the tip, etc., etc. But they can also be like triangular, for example, or square cross-section, things like this. So a lot of them, you are actually able to grip. Don't think of this as one of those combat knives that people bring to hair popping sharpness where they literally split hairs. It's not this kind of deal, right? That means if I have to, I can grab my own dagger and work with that. If you want to look like a total badass, uh, you better practice this a while because otherwise you might look like a dead fool. One of the <laughs> techniques that we've got here is he wants to stab me in the belly and I catch it here and I turn it around and drive it into him. How does this work? Well, ideally I catch it like this. It says one hand on his dagger hand, the other under the blade. I'm thinking palm down simply because for the next step, this is gonna make sense. So then I want to control the wrist and I want to use the leverage here with that dagger to force it up. And then I'm gonna push my chest into his pommel. I can't just do like leisurely, you know, like one, one, two, three. No, it's gotta be like any technique this can fail, but once it hits, a certain critical point, it's pretty much guaranteed to succeed. So it can fail here, it can fail here. As soon as I've got it basically here, I'm good. 
because here, even if he resists now, I can drive with my entire body weight against just his arm. Of course it's gonna work. I have two arms on his one. I'm going with my entire body weight pushing against his dagger. So that makes up for any potential uh, strength advantage that, that he might have. So this is a great one. I definitely like this, but again, if you screw it up, it's gonna look something like this. We'll get to more of the difficulties later. Another one that I'm sure you've seen is he tries to stab me and I do this, right? So there are problems with this, um, namely resist. Don't let me do it, right? I don't like, I can try to push against his, his elbow and it might be painful, but he, if he doesn't want me to let it, to move it, I may not be able to. There is a different version of this, which is step from this side. I catch it here and I grab it right there. And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna be gentle here. So I pull it into my chest. You, you tap or let me know when it gets painful. But the idea is this, right? I already need to have the arm here because otherwise this, this takes too long. I already need to have it here. So, boom. I pull the elbow in against my chest. And if I now push toward him, yeah, see? So uh, let's try that again and, and really try to resist and not let me do it. Okay. Yep. Mechanically, you have a huge advantage. At first, when you see the picture without the description, it may look like you're just kind of trying to mess with it here, but no, it says pull the elbow toward you. And this makes all the difference. If I pull here, like, if I, if I was, was a real asshole, I would go like this, and that would just straight up break his elbow. Just because mechanically there's no way he can resist this. There's that one, which is good. Then, uh, oh, that's a thing, by the way. Some of the manuscripts, they describe a technique. This is how you disarm and, and kill him, and this is good. One of the manuscripts always ends with, and this is good, this is also good. It's an interesting convention. Anyway, this one, I'm not sure if I could pull that off for real, but let's just uh, take it fairly easy. So you do a downward thrust, and I go here, and then strip the dagger. I step off to the side, and strip the dagger. This is not gonna be easy, but if he's really overcommitted, boom, the idea here is I use the leverage of the dagger. There's only so far his wrist can bend before this prize out of his, his hand. By the way, the longer the dagger, the easier this is, which is also a reason why with a lot of modern knives, I would not try this. Rundle daggers are quite long, so. Yeah, the, this is a bit longer than even a very long one, but let's assume his, it's just a particularly long one. Like the further out I am, the easier it's gonna be. So I'm just gonna show, um, don't let me move it. Resist, resist, okay, resist, resist. Okay, resist, resist, don't let me move it. What are you doing? No, the further away, the more leverage you have, the easier it is to do this. So with a rondel dagger, yeah, absolutely. You can strip it from their hand, no matter how much they resist or how strong they are. So again, downward stab, I step in, and I throw him. Are you okay if I throw you? Yes. Is it fine yeah. with you? I mean, you, you have gear and everything. Yeah. I just didn't want to throw you without consent. <laughs> Stab, boom, boom. And I keep a hold of the dagger, right? So now I can strip it or stab it. Why are you stabbing yourself? Why are you stabbing uh. yourself? You grab me, you want to stab me? And now I grab it here and I do this, right? So for one, I'm blocking the shoulder and then I can do this. The idea is I, I want to grab his arm. It grabs me just, just so I control it. So now I can step in and I can, I can throw him by because his structure is already broken. And uh, if you resist me now, try not to let me throw you. You can't. I was trying. There is a more brutal version of this throw. I catch it here and the same thing as before with you know stepping in for the th throw, but now I'm going for the throat. So now you, you just force choke him and slam him over your leg. Tries to stab me, I catch it, and then I bring my, my hand under. So this is basically similar to one of the other techniques, it's just, it starts differently. So catch, boom, right? So here I can now try to throw him or, 
you know, just, just keep control of this, try to strip the dagger, things like that. There's a weird one. Again, the old downward stab. And I do this. <laughs> How they describe it is simply you, tr you move your hand up to try to catch it, and at the same time you, you kick him. Uh, I think it says kick him in the belly. It looks lower. It's self-explanatory. I have my hands up, and I go like this, and I just pry it out. So, boom, and again, leverage. The further I can be away, the better. As long as I control his wrist, because if I didn't do this, he, like, resist, this is not happening, okay? However, if I, if I catch it like this, resist, I can still pry it out, all right? So, and for this, the, the manuscript doesn't tell us specifically, but what I like to do for things like this is kind of hinge forward. Like you hip hinge, move your body forward. So the idea is this way I can get my, my arms further forward and I can remove most of my lower body right here and then strip. One that I'm pretty sure I've seen in modern knife defense as well. Downward stab, this. So I, I catch it here. Then the other hand goes in here over the crook of his arm. And now I, I catch it like this. And the idea is now I can turn my entire body and either break his joint or take him down. He tries to stab me, boom. I grab the arm and I break it over my shoulder. Yeah, ouch. This is again one of those things that can easily fail up to a certain point. I can miss this, obviously, and get stabbed. I can get this, but then fail to grab his arm because he does something else, right? But if I, if I manage, it looks like this. So crunch. Ideally, the elbow is right on my shoulder and I just snap that son of a bitch. And that's how they show it. So like this. And if I don't want to do this, I can also just pull him over Whoa. and throw him that way. Even when you're being gentle, it hurts. So Joints. that shows you that yeah. any kind of joint manipulation like this, even if they resist, it sucks. This can also be done from downward stab, of course. So boom this yep. so same thing like th that's why you, you keep seeing it over and over again because it can be used for both of these could you pull this off against a resisting opponent this is one of those cases where you have to keep in mind this is a repertoire of responses that you have if the opponent resists you have to be able to adjust on the fly and you need to be able to you need to have practiced these enough to be able to fire those movement patterns off in different scenarios. So for example, if he comes in for a downward stab and I, I try to catch this, but this is actually a feint. Like he, he comes over here, I need to be able to do something like this. So here, boom, now I've got this. Okay, what can I do from here? Well, I can do this, for example, right? Um, this relates to something else. Or let's say you, you feint here and then you do a downward stab from there. So I try to catch it here, it comes there. All right, not ideal, but now I might actually be able to get that arm break. Um, or let's say I go for the arm break. Let's say here, let's say I try this and I, I just fail, like he, he resists, he, he tries something. Okay, now I've got something else. Now I've got, instead I've got it tucked under my arm. So now if I push forward, I'm going to, yeah, see? I'm going to press my chest against his elbow joint. So it's not what I was going for, but because I know this technique and some other grappling techniques, I can adapt from there. That's my way of saying this makes sense to me. Some of it may seem gimmicky or whatever at, at first glance, and there's always gonna be a problem of, okay, if you demonstrate something with a compliant partner, at least semi-compliant, yeah, you can pull off a lot more things. But I think structurally they're sound, mechanically they make sense. I find blocking or deflecting is not too difficult. What's most challenging is actually getting a hold of the arm. It's easy to slip off or otherwise fail to get a good grip. And I haven't trained that much with or against daggers.
Even partial success can be better than nothing. In this case, I got stabbed, but at least my partial block would have limited the depth of the stab wound. It's not good, but could have been worse. <laughs> Almost. They don't say this explicitly, but I would think a lot of the time it's about grabbing onto clothing. So you stab, I just claw into this, this garment, and then I try to do my technique so that he can't just pull away easily. Because if I just got this, he can eat, just pull away in a split second and I don't have anything. But of course that makes it harder for me to actually just, I need to get this immediately. I can't just place and grab. I have to pretty much, you know, catch and grab immediately. So it's gotta be, boom, this, right? Now I have a chance. If I just do it this way, then not really. This I've seen in both historical manuscripts and in modern ones. So either against this, cross block like that, because now I can, you know, possibly get this here or against a downward stab. And the idea is if I, if I catch it with one arm, it could slip off like here or whatever, unless I, I do what I just mentioned. Or if I do it with the other arm, it can, like th this, can, this can go, right? So whereas here I kind of funnel it in, in this and if he tries to go to, off to either side, I get this, right? But again, this is easier said than done when we're actually, actually going at full speed and it's, this is very hard. If you really get good at these techniques and do them over and over again against a compliant, semi-resistant, fully resistant partner, etc., try it and, you know, work on it in sparring, etc., I think you could pull it off. It's just, it also, of course, depends on how good the, the dagger attacker is. Because, like, yeah, sure, some, some drunken peasant who's just like, you know, comes in overcommitted and doesn't know what to do once you get them. Yeah, you're gonna be able to do this. This is not by any means bulletproof. This is still like unarmed against armed anything, you're screwed. That's kind of the, the, the general idea. But these techniques do make sense and give you a chance. You may not be able to pull them off, but I have a better chance knowing these than I do without. Because what the hell am I gonna do? I mean, ideally you run away. <laughs> That's, if you're like, cornered in a bar or something, a tavern, you can't get away, then okay, this might work. So yeah, you have to take it with a grain or maybe a sack of salt, like with anything. It's just don't ever believe anyone who shows you a defense, like an unarmed defense, unarmed against anything. Knife, dagger, sword, club, I don't care, baseball bat, I don't care. If they show it to you and they make it look effortless and they don't explain anything, about the dangers, run, ignore it. This is probably not a good idea. Yeah, this is probably way too long. Let's just leave it at that. Thanks for watching, fuck off.